some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello and welcome back to the channel, everybody. You know, it's been a while since I've done a uh, video on Chile. So let's go ahead and check up on them and see what's up with them. In addition, we will take a look at uh, a video from Patrick Darcy breaking down uh, Chile's latest attempt at uh, creative writing as far as his uh, appeal goes. And, uh, well, it is something to behold. So let's go ahead and sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hello, world. Today is June 2nd, 2024. My name is Chile DeCastro. If you're not familiar with my story, I'm a journalist who's been locked in jail for filming a cop. Bullshit! Bullshit! Oh, we all know better than that, Chili. We all know that you were put in there for obstruction and you got additional jail time tacked on because of your attitude problem toward the judge. And you know that it's not uh, the judge's fault. We uh, And you know that it's uh, all your fault. You just don't want to admit it because that wouldn't fit with your little persecution complex. Now, would it? It's absolutely preposterous what happened. You can see the videos on my channel if you want to get updated. This is my daily journalistic update. Right now, we are 38 days away from the July 10th appeal in front of Judge Michelle Levitt. So every day in the dungeon is like a week, every single day. Well, Chili, that seemed to be a bit of an awkward transition, jumping from the appeal to uh, whatever it is you're talking about right now. But uh, here in the next few minutes, I will let Patrick Darcy uh, explain why your appeal is doomed to failure and why you should have at least uh, gone back to uh, the uh, remedial writing classes back in college if you ever went to college at all. I stay awake all night long studying because that's when it's quiet and then I try to sleep through the day. I put pencil erasers in my ears. Remember the old school erasers that we used to use when we were kids and you'd put the, the, the eraser on the end of the pencil? That's what I use. You erase it down and then you put the part that you put on the pencil in your ears and it mutes out 80% of the noise or so. So I wanted to say a special shout out to my family and to my friends. Cope doggy dog, thanks for your unwavering support. I just found out today. Thank you, dude. I appreciate you, man. To my family back home, where I'm from on the peninsula, I miss you guys. I love you. I never thought I would have any time served in jail in my life. This will be overturned. I will sue. I will be vindicated. Yeah, Chili, you have about as much chance of uh, getting this overturned as you do winning the chance to become governor of some state. I don't know which one you want to run for, but it, you still have just as much chance as you would, which would be approximately 0% chance. And besides, if you were really serious about... uh running for governor of a state, uh, you would have been already campaigning for this years ago, but, you know, you have wasted so much time and effort on other things that, yeah, you'll never catch up on that. And the county will have to do a huge payment settle out. I'm sorry this has happened. I can't stop, though. I will not stop filming the cops. I will not stop fighting for my First Amendment rights, for my Fifth Amendment right, for my Fourth Amendment right. I can't stop. No matter what, I will not stop. So to the friends and family of Team Delete Laws, thank you. So what I do is I spend the majority of my time researching, and my research this week, last two, three weeks now, has been on this book that somebody sent me. Thank you guys for sending me books. Oh, my God. And Peter's letter. Peter sent me a copy of the letter that he sent to redress government in a petition. Peter, your letter was hilarious. I died laughing. He sent the petition into the dishonorable and biased judge, and he sent me a copy of it, and I laughed my butt off. Thank you so much for that, Peter. It was a moment of brevity for me. Now, I've been studying the Supreme Court constantly. Let me tell you something. It's a scam. We're supposed to be what's called a bicameral government. Bicameral meaning that we vote for the House and we voted for senators starting in 1913 with the 17th Amendment. But before that, it was bicameral where the House of Representatives would appoint senators in the states across the Union. Well, 
that wasn't working. We had the stalwarts and we had Thomas Paine. It became such a corrupt government that both William McKinley and James Garfield were killed because of appointments. And so without going into the detail of that, a lot of people will talk about the Supreme Court and they'll say, oh, the Supreme Court shouldn't be elected because it'll create corruption. Well, let me tell you something. I've now researched every single Supreme Court justice that we've ever had, 115, 116 of them. I think we're at 117 now. And let me tell you something. Each one of them has been political. Charles E. Hughes, who was Supreme Court Justice from 1930 to 1941, he, he was the Chief Justice. He was constantly running for president, constantly running for senator, constantly running for governor. He was the governor of New York. If you go back there, John McQueen, who was a good guy, an, an, an abolitionist, 1929 to 1967, I think. So John McQueen, M-C-L-E-A-N, constantly running for president, constantly running for House of Representatives, appointed Levi Woodbury, Levi Woodbury, appointed Secretary of Treasury, Secretary of State. All the Supreme Court justices are political. Don't let anybody fool you. The Supreme Court justice whole appointment thing is a scam from beginning to end. Let me explain something. Supreme Court justices, what their function is, is to uphold our civil liberties. If a state writes a, 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 some sort of legislation, like they did in New Mexico. Remember in New Mexico, they said they're going to ban guns from Santa Fe, New Mexico. And the governor had written a bill and pushed it through the legislation. The Supreme Court's job is to come through and say that goes against the Constitution and they strike down the legislation. Well, here's the whole thing. The Supreme Court, the appointments, are all based on who's friends with which elitist. It's a gigantic scam. John McLean's seat was then retaken by another Ohio judge who he hand-selected to be his replacement. They wanted an Ohio judge to replace an Ohio judge. Well, let me ask you a question. What do you give a damn if the guy's from Ohio? You want the Supreme Court personnel to uphold your civil liberties, to strike down legislation that goes against your constitutional rights. The Supreme Court not being elected is the biggest scam we're facing. It's the reason why our, our, our rights are so eroded and so down to zero. I'm in jail right now for filming a cop. And there we go. Such marvelously faulty reasoning on the part of Chile de Castro trying to connect the dots as to why he is in prison, well, jail right now. Uh, it's not, that's not because of, uh, him trying to obstruct the duties of a cop or, uh, well, acting like a complete jackass in court. No, 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 no. This has to do with what he perceives as a corrupt justice system going all the way up to the Supreme Court. No, no, no. It's his way of deflecting, saying that I'm in here not because of my actions, but because... The entire system is corrupt. Uh, yeah, okay, whatever, Chili. Yeah, don't bother looking in a mirror and seeing that maybe you're the reason why you are in the situation you are in at this moment. Now, I'm going to just stop it right here as far as his video goes and go straight to Patrick Darcy and he can explain to Chili why he's not exactly going to win this appeal and it is quite funny i've got the district attorney's responding brief and i think they did a good job on it it does have mistakes but okay fine at this point the district attorney is just merely trying to preserve the win all the burden is on chili i'm going to say the case is over at this point uh, there's not really much chili can do to fix this but but he does have a final shot the last word the reply brief. He gets to reply to their brief. And if he's going to make a chance here to salvage something, he's going to have to toss the argument of ineffective assistance of counsel. Michael Mee's brief was five pages. And that's counting the, the front page, which is basically a throwaway page, and the last page, which is a throwaway page. When you start smattering your appellate brief with all these issues, what you do is you weaken them because you've only got so much real estate. And you can't, a superficial analysis will not win. Right now, you got to pick your battles. Saying the judge was biased, if you guys look back at my video a long time ago, before this all started, I said it's going to be a loser argument. 
you've only got so many pages to make your case. It would have been better spent talking about how one of the statutes could snare an innocent person, saying your lawyer is incompetent. Now you got to show that the, the outcome would have been different except for his mistakes. Well, that takes up a lot of real estate. If you wanted to just spend 20 pages talking about why the obstruction statute was unconstitutional or how the Wilson case tried to save it and now declares it constitutional and how you fit within an exception, you might knock out one statute and at least cut a conviction out. No, I'm sorry, Patrick, but he's not going to do that. He's not going to take the time to thoughtfully put together an argument like that where uh, it make uh, a cohesive sense all the way through without using a persecution complex. No, 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 no. He's got to put that out there to make sure that the uh, justice system knows that he's been persecuted, that he is uh, innocent, he is uh, incompetent as well, based upon what I've seen with this uh, brief that he put out. He's got to make sure that everybody knows he's not the brightest bulb out there, and maybe they'll take mercy on him. So here's the brief by the the people. Uh, counsel entered a not guilty plea on behalf of his client. You could just say counsel pled not guilty, whatever. You could save time here. Uh, calling him officer. Bench memorandum made the argument. Instead of made the argument, you could say the bench memorandum argued that filming officials. This case isn't about filming because the cop and the judge both said Filming is okay. It's your actions that are the problem. Yeah, try explaining that to uh, a bunch of uh, people who've been spoon-fed this line of garbage that uh, all police are evil or uh, no uh, officer is out there to help you or anything like that, who've been spoon-fed this garbage by people like Chili for years on end. Yeah, try explaining that to them. But hey, I really doubt that this brief that Chili wrote up was meant for, was meant for uh, the judge who's uh, presiding over this case. I really do believe that this was meant more toward his uh, sheeple. Because it is certainly written in a way that all, well, that they can understand. But unfortunately, that's not the right way to go, considering that you need to write it for the legal system and not for uh, the layman, the average layman out there. No, yeah, that would be uh, detrimental to your cause right there. The bench trial commenced in this matter. How about you said trial started on March 19, 2024 and lasted less than a few hours at the trial? Well, where else would it have been? Officer Brandon Bork testified. Well, okay, he's at a trial, so yeah, you would expect him to testify. An appellant testified on his own behalf. Was he testifying for someone else? At the conclusion of the trial, the justice court found appellate guilty. Well, when would they find him guilty? During the trial? And then guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Is there another standard that I'm unaware of? Oh my goodness, uh, Patrick, please take it easy on Chile. He's not exactly a constitutional law scholar. I Oh, wait, he claims to be that, but... He has the writing skills of a kindergartner. On March 19th, so we've got a lot of prepositions beginning up here. Ons and ons and ons. Remember about the cadence that I was talking about. On, 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 on. And it's on followed by a date. This appeal now follows. Well, of course it does. It follows a conviction. On. Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Officer Brandon Bork initiated a traffic stop. Officer Bork, Officer Bork, it's going to say that continuously. You can just say uh, Bork. The driver was cooperative but seemed confused. Irrelevant. Appellant approached the area and began recording the traffic stop. And began recording. See, these are all uh, less effective ways of communicating. Appellant then approached the driver. How about appellant approached the driver and began speaking with her from roughly five to Officer Bork keeps saying that explained that he did not know anything about the pound. Well, that was not explaining. That was really testifying, but that he was concerned about his safety. Well, we know at trial, he said exactly the opposite. Officer safety was not an issue. Hmm. You're going to want to mention that in your reply brief. Oh, come on now, Chili. You really think they're not going to take a look at the testimonies of 
those who were at the trial and not see any discrepancies between what uh, you say and what was said on the stand. I mean, uh, you're dealing with people who are experienced with this kind of thing, Chili. Act like it. You're not dealing with your sheeple. And I think the safety of the driver issue wasn't really that. You guys check me if I'm wrong here. But wasn't the cop saying at the time at the scene that he was more concerned about the driver privacy, not safety? And if you will remember from my videos back in December, I said officer safety will be the basis for the conviction. So what did you got? What did you do, Chili? Did you address officer safety really at all? Did you have the cases ready to show this is bullshit? You know, the cop admitted it. Wasn't officer safety? Yet they're throwing it up right here, and throwing up is the right word. Officer Burke further explained he was trying to back a penalty of roughly twenty. No, he did not say that. No, he talked about the twenty-one foot rule that he learned at at the at the academy. And remember, if you have twenty-one subways and you each uh, eat a beef sandwich, that's the twenty-one foot rule. Because if he's saying officer safety is not an issue, then why is this evidence even irre irrelevant? Was there any objections to admitting this evidence in California? There'd be a three fifty two objection relevance and do you remember the district attorney bashing everyone over the head with relevance objections and it was getting sustained left and right judges love relevance objections officer bork explained didn't we see explained before that backing someone up to roughly 20 minutes so he can continue doing his job without inference is commonly taught in training okay that can be a training thing but what does that have to do with chili i don't remember any there were no commands to back up 21 feet but the people sure make it sound like that. Officer Bork was concerned for his own safety as well as safety of the driver. This is kind of a argumentative statement of facts. They're not supposed to be that way. By the way, go get in your car, little doggy, and write your ticket. Didn't he also use the F-bomb? Flashback. Back up, I'm going to detain you. You're going to detain me how? In which way? Actually, I'm standing right here. I'm at least 10 feet away, officer. I got to tell you, I'm a constitutional law scholar. You can do whatever you want, but just understand something. Your name will go on the lawsuit. Mind your own business. Mind your own business. I'm a member of the press. Go get in your car and do your job, little doggy. Go see her. You're being detained right now. Okay, then detain me. Oh, she's free. free. Oh, you're going to detain a journalist? 2015, Rodriguez. Ah, don't, don't, don't put your hands on me. End of flashback. Yeah, there was definitely an f bomb in there that had been edited out at some point uh, in this particular version. Anyway, did not have an unfettered right to record the interaction in a time, place, manner. Okay, so this, these are constitutional restrictions. Instead, this case is about whether appellant obstructed the investigation, and resisted his arrest. De novo review comes about whenever you have questions of pure law. Interpretation of case law, de novo. Not, Third Circuit, Ron Circuit. Then it goes to a uh, U.S. Supreme Court case. Another U.S. A lot of citation U.S. Supreme Court case. Uh, Seventh Circuit, wrong authority. First cir Circuit, wrong authority. Colton, famous case. Wrong authority, wrong authority. You would think that this uh, was written by somebody who uh, knew absolutely nothing about the law and, well, absolutely tries to pretend that he does know something about the law. Wow, absolutely amazing that this kind of thing will come out in the long run. That this right cannot be restricted in any way. Actually, that's true, and Chile said it on the stand, but I don't see this quote, the guy quoting that. When Chile said, I don't think that my... And I'm paraphrasing. It was something like, I don't think that my I should surrender my First Amendment rights to some driver. Okay, that would have been worth quoting. That shows willfulness, and willfulness will get you convicted. The right to film the police subject to reasonable time, place, and manner restrictions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ninth Circuit, good. Uh, Fifth Circuit, irrelevant. Third Circuit, irrelevant. You see these kind of citations to, to general circuit authority whenever you're in appellate court and you're trying to resolve what they call a case of first impression. And you're looking for the rationale of sister courts decide whether or not how you should figure this one out. Appellant was charged and convicted. You could just say appellant was convicted. Makes it a crime for any person who after due notice. No, not true anymore. Because the Wilson decision, if I'm not mistaken, took away the due notice requirement because it was a confusing statute. This is a big mistake, a rookie move. Unpublished decisions, not allowed to cite to those at all. There are some specific grounds in federal court where you can cite to unpublished cases, but not in California. 
uh, you're getting some trouble for that. There is an exception when the case involves the same litigants and it involves disciplinary charges and shit like that. The person must not be detained longer than necessary to affect the protection and no longer than six. That's kind of weird because if I'm not mistaken, the United States versus Evans case, which came from Rodriguez, says that once the traffic stop is over, they're not allowed to prolong it beyond that point of ending the stop. So it's just bringing in a drug sniff dog. Then this is true. Appellant admitted on the stand he did not actually know the statutory language. Uh, Chile said that he thought it regarded some kind of physical act of obstruction or resistance. And the Wilson decision said it doesn't necessarily have to be a physical resistance. That's one of the things people are missing about the Wilson case. If you're obstructing by just not cooperating, they'll consider that physical as well. The resisting arrest, I think, is a wrap. Now, this is not really accurate. Relevant portion, no, that's not really the relevant portion. If I remember correctly, it has several sections to it, which the Wilson court decided to deconstruct. And there's Wilson, okay? Specific intent. Well, that was in their attempt to save the statute from being destroyed because it was passed in 1911. No legislative history, really almost no appellate history because people normally don't appeal misdemeanors. And they tried to save it through doing an analysis. They looked at the Hill decision. They looked at Cohen. And here it is. That's right. Appeals. The Court of Appeals further clarified that blocking the path of an officer refusing to obey could constitute the physical conduct requirement statute. Right. So, you know, that's where I think Chile gets busted. And then trying to disqualify the judge. I mentioned this. The failure to timely disqualify the judge usually waives the decision. In sentencing, this did not help Chile at all. He called the officer in my courtroom pigs. He's nodding his head up and down. The judge made sure to reference that he was nodding his head up and down. Doesn't wish to engage in wrongdoing. Seems to be from observing him. He wants, he wants this. He wants to get arrested. He wants to get into the altercation with the police officer. He welcomes this. All willfulness. Every bit willfulness. What did I tell you in my earlier videos? The conviction will rest on willfulness. Here's one of the problems that Chile's facing now with this motion to admit new evidence, which I'll go over. The state might say, well, okay, fine, you want to admit that? Then we're going to admit your narration of the uh, of the encounter, which we think will more than prove that you were guilty of resisting arrest. Ineffective assistance of counsel, very difficult argument to make. That was a good brief, good enough, I think, to get the job done. I wanted to show this. Once again, another person who comes now. Ugh. What we've got here is ransom note uh, style of writing. Comes now defendant. By and through his attorney, Michael Mee of Liberators Criminal Defense, and hereby files the following memorandum. There was a missing period there. This motion, it didn't say it was really a motion. It said it was a memorandum. Motions required notice and everything. This looks more like a trial brief, pocket brief, based upon the points and authorities here and, and upon any other pleadings filed in this case. I don't know, kind of conflicting language here. Once again, they used the Glick decision from the wrong circuit. Then they used Dyer, which I think also was from the wrong circuit. Yeah, Eastern District of Virginia. Who cares? Typo, no spacing. You know, so what? Uh, Fourth Circuit. Now get to Ninth Circuit. Good. The First Circuit Court of Appeals, like we really care. Okay? We don't care. How about that? Catch me outside. How about that? Anyway, Michigan, that's it. Uh, a new year, 23024, which he'll repeat again. 23024, those are very important years. They're very far away. In fact, by the time they hit, the whole world would have been destroyed anyway, so we don't have to worry about it. You know, Tilly, a good rule of thumb when it comes to writing things like this, well, writing in general, is to have somebody else proofread what you write. That way... They can find the mistakes in grammar, punctuation, and everything like that. I mean, when you've been sitting up for hours and hours writing this kind of thing, I mean, mistakes will happen. But if you have somebody else proofread it for you, they'll be able to point out those errors in your writing, and you can easily correct. In your case, you might be able to trade a honey bun for somebody to proofread your work for you, while you are in there, and that might be able to help you out in the long run. I mean, I'm sure that the average uh, inmate in uh, jail would be able to easily find a hundred errors in your uh, 
grammar and punctuation that you could easily correct. I mean, and for doing it for Honey Bun, I'm sure they would be more, more than willing to do it. So if they're saying, and they did in their opening brief, that this memorandum needed to be argued and debated, this is not going to win anything. So once again, it doesn't change the outcome. Ineffective assistance to counsel argument completely obliterated. Okay, so they want to admit additional evidence. This is what uh, Oren was saying at the hearing. And uh, in the instant case, he likes that phrase. I don't know what other case he's referring to. Now, what I talked about, repetitive writing. Desires introduced, three. Always remember, every time you write out a number, put it in parentheses. That's important. That's a, it's a new standard that I think is important that all lawyers need to do. Desires introduced. Desires. What is a desire? Uh, in his opening brief, Mr. Extensively cites, I really don't remember that one. I thought he was extensively citing Glick 18 times, if I remember correctly. The court may take judicial notes regarding the admission of the photograph evidence concerning the recording of George Floyd's murder trial. I can just see the judge saying, what are you talking about? Judicial notice can be taken of recordings. A doctor to record is not disputed, it's recorded. Pleadings, but not the truth or uh, assertions within it. And what relevance does the George Floyd case have to any of this footer? I mean, it's ridiculous. Okay, sorry, it just is. And three, three, still photographs. Three, three, still captured by, captured from, captured by officers, Officer Bork. See how we're using different terminology for the same thing. In case uh, they're actually listening on Chile's side, you want to take a look at the Scott decision. Uh, I highlighted some of the relevant points for you. It talks about analysis of uh, statutes in Nevada, brings up Nevada cases that you might want to look at, and uh, talks about the obstruction charge, yeah, the Casaneda decision, and uh, also Colton, City of Houston, the Flamingo case, overbreadth. And notice that it's making reference here to Nevada cases. So since your lawyers are getting paid for all of this, you can look it up. It mentions here that writs of certiorari are only granted on extraordinary basis. That it's discretionary, doesn't have to be issued, and it's requesting extraordinary relief. The Wells decision, Wilson decision, and it talks about one of the charges which Chile got convicted. And it talks about how it's not overbroad, not unconstitutional. Uh, this is a very relevant recent case, 2024 in February, and it would be nice if this was discussed and how there are nuances here that would apply to Chile. We note that does not require the use of force or violence and that a person's action blocking the path or inaction, refusing to obey, may constitute physical conduct that hinders, delays, or obstructs an officer. And non-aggressive. In other words, being passive-aggressive is aggressive. All right, sorry for the length of this thing. If there's going to be any chance of the the, the people in Nevada getting another shot at an appellate uh, decision to affect these statutes, which I think are unconstitutional, yeah, this is helping Chile, okay? But I, I think there's enough there to convict them anyway. I'm looking at the statute and how it could help the citizens in Nevada don't have the money to fight back. This is a, These are bad statutes, okay? Uh, where's the analysis that shows overlapping language, okay, the confusion that it creates, and how much of it is discretionary by the cop? You make your decisions. I'm just a voice in the wind now because you've not done anything I've, I've looked at. Uh, pick your battle cho and, and, cho and choose it. You may want to just focus on one statute and just obliterate it, okay? But that's your call. Yeah, I agree with you on that one, Patrick. I mean, if it's a bad statute, it's a bad statute. Uh, but unfortunately, Chile is not going to look at it that way. He's going to look at it as if he's the one being persecuted. He's going to uh, weaponize it to the point where he loses focus on whatever the argument was. And, uh, well, it's going to be all about him, 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 and nobody else but him. And, uh, well, he's not going to focus on the greater good of everybody else that gets caught up in this. I mean, it's all about him. It's always been about him and his grift. He's not going to focus on 
that one particular statute because it doesn't fit his narrative that gets him all this uh, money in the at the end of the day where he's uh, being the one that's persecuted. And I'm sure that this grift, when he gets out of jail, will uh, only increase because, well, I'm the persecuted party in this particular scenario. I tried my hardest to fight the system, but uh, I was too incompetent to do so because I was screwed over the whole time. Yeah, that's how this is going to end up at the end of the day, Patrick. It's not about the law. It's about his bottom line, his narrative, and that's really about it. It's not anything else but him. And no amount of proofreading his uh, documents will ever help him out in this particular scenario anyway. I mean, you might as well be just a fart in the wind when it comes to that kind of thing. I mean, he's paying attention, but not in the way you think. So at any rate, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one. Dude, so there's no way I can get in, bro? Come on, I'll put you on my YouTube. But shut up, Wesley. You gotta put signs up, ma'am, if it's- Are you Glenn Serio? Who's that?